So I think we're going to go back together now. We've got the front subframe. We're going to get that shot blasted along with the axle. So I'll add the subframe down the axle and all off for, for shot blasting and get that painted. I also just remove all the little brackets and little bits and pieces like handbrake cable brackets and the tank straps, top of the strut mounts, stuff like that. Just all the little ancillary metal brackets and stuff which are just always end up getting a bit crusty. So we've taken all that and get all that shot blasted. Then we should be able to bolt all that on fresh. So at least it'll look good for a minute. Now yeah, I can't do a lot more until I get those bits back now. So I guess that kind of concludes the body preparation, if that's what you want to call it. Next stage is going to be probably to start mocking up the engine and stuff. Now we can't really do a lot with that until I actually put the short block back together again, because I'm going to need to actually drop a block in the car to then have something to work from. Next video will be probably focusing on the engine. So we've got a new donor block here. We've got a donor block there for pistons and parts. Then obviously we've got everything that came out of the old engine, so cylinder head and all the rest of the rubbish. So I guess the next video will be a case of building up the new engine. We're going to be using parts from all three, but we'll get into that in the next video. So for anyone wondering, the paint and stuff that I was using under the car is Pour 15. And then the under seal is a dinner troll product. I think it's 4941. Um, and I think then in the weird arches I used uh, 447, I think is what they call it. But it's, yeah, just look up the dinner troll stuff. So I suspect Christmas has probably been and gone by the time you're actually watching this. It looks like we've got something on the lens. Or maybe not. Anyway, so we're starting to put stuff back together again. I didn't actually get the camera out yesterday, but I bolted the rear beam up. Which is not really a lot to see. So I've had that shot blasted and painted along with the front subframe and lots of other little bits and bobs. So we've got some new shocks in there because the same as the front ones, the gas ones were just destroyed as per. So they've gone, they can go straight in the bin. So a new set of shocks, brake lines, just ran some new brake lines. I'm still waiting for some clips to tidy this up. You can see they're coming up to the front of the car. And just left them there for a minute in the tees. So got just been putting the subframe together on the floor. Anti-roll bar back in, steering mat back in, just tidied it all up. These bushes and everything are all brand new, obviously, when it was built last time, so there's no need to replace any of that because it's done absolutely nothing. Same goes with all the, all the tie rods and stuff, they're all new when it was built last time. So I've just cleaned it all up, really giving it a paint job. So I'll get this lifted up now and bolt this back on the car. Then obviously we can start putting the hubs on the suspension and getting all the front end back together again. Obviously on the back, we've got new wheel bearings to go on, we'll sort the brakes out, put all that junk back together again, and hopefully we can get it back on its wheels again then. And obviously we've got to lift the fuel tank back up as well. So we'll make a start on that. Right, so we just bolt the subframe up. So now we can connect up the steering rack, get the front struts in, just bolt all the suspension back together basically, and uh, get the brakes bolted on and stuff. We actually changed the front brakes. So we're going to do away with the Brembo set that we had before and just go back to what I actually had. Well, before I had the Brembo set, which is just a set of 302s off a of newer Peugeot. Uh, reason for doing that purely to avoid buying a really expensive set of discs for the discs that I had on it with the Brembo's were a bit rough and they're ridiculously expensive. Frankly, the 302s always work just as well. The only real disadvantage is they're massively heavier. But I decided that the financial gain of just using those stock bigger brakes is gonna be far better for what we're doing here. Then they're probably very negligible gain in the weight reduction of the Brembo's. So we'll get those sold and we'll just go back to the old setup. Only slight disadvantage of that is now I've got another set of calipers I need to clean up and paint whereas the Brembo's were kind of good to go. But we'll do that next and uh, carry on bolting stuff together. Well, it would appear that we've now got a rolling chassis again, which was the aim over Christmas. We didn't quite make it at Christmas, but we got there in the end. Uh, so you can see we've got all the wheels back on now. It's just ready to drop back on the floor. And hopefully this is the chassis side of things sorted out. That turned into a lot more work than I was planning. But to be fair, when is that ever not the case with car projects? So, as you can see, I've got the wheels back on again. It is now a roller. 
I can't quite remember exactly where the video footage got to. I think I may have already shown this, I can't remember, but I'm just making this clip now because I'm about to drop it off the lift and that is the car done with. We're gonna move on to the engine, which hopefully will be a bit more interesting. So obviously we've got all the subframe back in, suspensions in, brakes are all back on and stuff. And we've got new brake lines running back through. We've got the axle all mounted up again, as you can see. And again, new brake lines, flexies. I had to put some new shocks on. The ones that were on the car before, absolutely knackered. So swapped them over. Rebuilt the calipers, new handbrake cables. Um, just tidies it all up, basically. So the wheels need some attention. They really want shock blasting and painting again, but that's a project for another day. So we'll just leave them on there now. They clear the front brakes being 16 inch, so I'll just leave them on there for a minute so we can roll the car around. So I might stick some photos in here now because this camera is not working very well. The sun is shining. So as I was saying before, I had absolutely no intentions on this project getting to this point again because this almost feels like what we did 10 years ago or however long ago it was. Just like always project with cars, if you get underneath them and start seeing rust or start seeing problems, it's a lot easier to deal with them then than it is to deal with them when they get worse. And particularly in this case, when you've got the engine out and all the subframe down and stuff, it's obviously by far the easiest time to deal with it. So at least now, you know, this is all protected for years to come. I'm gonna try and keep the car indoors now. So it's really tidied things up. And it kind of motivates you to do a better job on the rest of the work. If the car's in a half decent state when you're starting, if everything's falling to pieces and rotting out, it just, it just doesn't inspire you at all. So, Hopefully this will be the last time you need to be staring at the underside of this car, which is pretty much all you've been doing. I think there's just a couple other things that I forgot to include in the video, which I thought about doing at the last minute. And that was, I wanted to weld a patch. There was a load of cables and pipes and just basically just years of aftermarket junk needing to get from the engine bay to inside. And there was just a hole here that just got bigger and bigger. And it was just always a complete lash up. I was never happy with it. So I've completely done away with that, welded it over and also welded a patch plate over where I had those bulkhead connectors. Again, I'm not, I wasn't ever happy with them being up there. It's kind of a nice place to get to, but the problem is it's under the scuttle panel from the windscreen and all the water ends up down in there and it runs down the cables. And although I never had a problem, uh, I could easily see that becoming a problem one day. So I welded over that and we're gonna move that elsewhere, hopefully on the rebuild. And you can see I've also, I've ripped all the heater box and stuff out of the inside because the big grommet that sits where those heater matrix pipes go out has always been missing. It was kind of something that I didn't really care about because at the time when it was removed, uh, there were so many other holes in the bulkhead that it really made no difference. But like I said in the original video of this series, we're trying to get this back to being somewhat more original inside. So I've taken all that apart, managed to extract that grommet from another car, and we're going to try and put that back together properly again so it's all sealed up. And actually, the only thing that's just reminded me of as well which in hindsight I should have done before I did all this painting and stuff was there was a series of holes under here. I think some of them were some, from some original brake line clips because it's slightly different to this originally. But there was also some holes that I had rib nuts and stuff in. And I've just, I've knocked all that out and I've welded over them. Just see the couple different spots where the paint's a different color there. Try and remove those vulnerable zones for future corrosion and obviously just yet yeah, another hole making noise. So yeah, we're gonna drop this down now, push it into a corner out the way and hopefully in the next video we'll get on to the engine which is sat over there on the stand anyway thanks for watching <laughs>